Welcome to the uh, Hampton Municipal Budget Committee. Today is the 23rd day of the year 2019. I hope you'll all join me in pledging allegiance to our republic. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Okay, uh, first on the agenda is Good point. introduction of members, and by tradition, we will begin with this gentleman over here. Uh, What's your Frank name again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frank DeLuca, representing the school board. Brian Warburton. My name is Jones. Mike Plouf. Bob Ladd, Village District. David Morrow. There's an I citizen. <laughs> Thank you, one and all. Uh, First on the agenda, I don't know why it's still here. I guess it's a leftover, but information request. Um, I don't think we have anything outstanding, right? And is there any new information request desired? I think not, right? Okay, so let's move on. Uh, old business, other. Um, I guess you could say it's new business or old business, but I'm gonna treat it as old business because we got a new Warren article, which is up on the screen. Uh, basically, they took Article 45, which is the purchase of conservation land, oh. and um, wordsmithed it <laughs> after consultation with the Department of Revenue Administration, also known as DRA. I see nothing substantially different here. Uh, I assume the committee will have no desire at all to deal with this other than just say let our vote stand which was I believe eight nothing yes let me uh, did they, there was anything I read three quarters of the article is there anything uh, there is again on our website where you can see we voted eight nothing yeah I know I know okay. that but I mean is there anything there that uh, This was emailed to everybody, I believe, right? Yeah. And I did not. I didn't get it, I don't think. Well, you're Maybe getting I it now. Did. Maybe you're getting it now. In any case, did anyone see anything that dealt, was no, different, I mean, I, substantially I think, different? I, I, this, is, this is a bias for them, is it? Yeah, so we're just going to let this be, let our vote stand on this one, right? Okay, mm -hmm. great. Okay. Uh, is there any other old business anyone wishes to discuss? No. Okay, great. Uh, DRA communication. As you know, um, last week we received communication from uh, DRA. Uh, no, no, Tim, hold it. Do we have to vote on that officially? No. We already did. No. We, we already did. did. We, did. we just decided collectively to let it stand. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, last week the uh, DRA indirectly sent us a communique indicating that there would be serious implications or something to that effect regarding not voting for the budget. I didn't understand what those implications were. It was very vague and all that sort of stuff, so I wanted more clarity. I know that one or more members actually changed their vote as a consequence of that. What I would interpret as to be basically a fear statement since it didn't have any substance to it other than fear in my mind. So I wanted to talk to DRA and get substantial understanding of what was being communicated. So again, I talked to the supervisor was the person who sent that, and we spoke for a little, little over an hour on the phone on a variety of topics, including this one. Uh, and it turns out uh, that our understanding and my understanding is completely an error. Uh, and I will tell you what the understanding is now. Okay? According to the reason why we have to vote for the budget according to DRA is essentially this. There are certain laws that are in place, like the 10% rule in terms of how much you can increase or decrease the budget at the later session. That is based on the budget committee's approved budget. But if we didn't approve the budget, then... So there are a number of laws that are impacted of that nature. Um, and DRA's attitude or, or statement was to me that um, even though they're not 
an enforcement agency, they do some enforcement. Uh, so they're not just advisory 100%. They told me that if we didn't vote uh, to recommend the budget, then they would consider us to have not created a budget. And what happens when the budget committee does not uh, create a budget, the governing bodies create the budget. So it would be the selectman's budget, essentially, that would be created. As far as the DRA is concerned, that's what they would plug in, would be the selectman's number. So the bottom line is, we have to vote. We cannot separate the vote. Uh, here's the number, as we did this year, uniquely this year. Here's the number, and no, we don't recommend that number. It's simply not acceptable. Questions, comments? I have a question. Sure, Frank. Uh, so if we retake the vote on the town budget, mm -hmm. okay, as you indicated, then the def and we voted for the default budget, does so the default budget and our vote still stand? We don't vote for the default budget. Oh, yes, okay, we didn't vote for it. Okay, well, we thank you. We can't. Yeah. Okay. The chairman is saying we've already, this committee made a vote in favor after the last meeting, five in favor, four against. It's on the screen. So it's already been recommended by the Budget Committee. Okay. But I think as the chairman who really is so fine-tuned this, and I know Mrs. Zanoy will, will like this, let's say we had, because the feedback I get, let's say we had cut 600000 from this budget and recommended that budget. What happens? They fill the deliberative session and put it back in. What we need to do, and I think we're all on the right page, is go back to what I was it last year, year before was 53%. We needed 60 to be able to get at that default budget. The record that's what we have to really go after so that we can recommend that. Well, we, actually, declare it, declare it yeah. as our budget. We don't have the authority. It's, we, we, was it 53%? It wasn't a lot of votes uh, missed, but that's what we really have to do. But I, I will tell you, and, and I, I just want to make this comment. Um, I was at a function this weekend which had people from 80 years old down to 25. Many young couples in this town that applauded us for everything we're doing. They think it's unbelievable. People who are taxpayers, it could have been Jerry's kids, whatever, saying enough is enough. So not when we hear this stuff, everybody's happy with this stuff. That's not the case. And I, I think the message has to be, much like we did with the schools, and we got applauded for that. We sent the message. I turned my vote around and voted for it, but I think a strong message was sent this year, and hopefully the town, absolutely not. It's out of control. 600,000 more than last year, not counting warrant articles. But the chairman, I want to thank him for doing the, the due diligence of explaining that. It does make sense. I'm not happy with it, but I think that's what we've got to go after next year. I think we've got to go after getting that back on the warrant, the default issue. Email? Uh, David. I'm totally lost. <laughs> God, the last couple of years, and then when you go into the booth and you take a vote as the average citizen going in to vote, they right. have a budget and you have a default budget, in which we did that last year and the year before. Mm -hmm. But I'm hearing now we shouldn't have done that? No, that's the number no, of the sure, town. Sure. No. Okay. The, um, the default budget exists only because we're an SB2 town. That's we became correct. an SB2 town in 1997. Yeah. So this Warren article reads the same for the last uh, 20 years, 21 years. Uh, the only thing that changes is are the two numbers. So the question is, how do you come up with those two numbers? The default budget number is created by the governing body, the Board of Selectmen. And what Brian was pointing out is that there is a law that the town meeting can vote to give the budget committee the authority to create the default budget number. But that requires a 60% vote. That, that was put on the ballot two years ago and received something like 52 point something. Yeah. I remember it being on, the, yeah. being on the ballot that we could make it up and we were voted against at the election. So the, the, the proposed budget, which is what, is that's the number that we create. Okay? And so, what DRA is saying, and again, it makes sense, although I'm not necessarily happy to hear it. Um, we can't create a number and then not support the number. And it's because of the implications it has on other laws that refer to that number, basically. So we have to, if we create a number, once we create a number, we have to recommend it. If we don't recommend it, 
then we didn't really create the number. That's DRA's point of view. And they will get the number from the governing body, namely the Board of Selectmen, instead of from us. So they'll use the, bo the governing body, the Selectmen's default budget? No, their proposed budget. Remember, they made a proposal to us. Uh, yes. Okay. But we also have a default budget. Yeah, which they create. We which don't. they created. Yeah. They did both. Right. Right? Right, but their their proposed budget becomes our responsibility. We take that as input to our process. Our output is our proposed budget. Okay. So why can't our proposed budget be their default budget? The law. The law says you can't do no, that. No, the, the default budget is defined by law as to what can and cannot be in there. Right. Okay. Contract. So we won't go into it right now, but what that is. But the bottom line is. So did we do it wrong last year? No. No, we haven't done it before. No. But the message. Can I just add the but message? If you go back four years ago, we did it wrong, and I'll get to that point later. Let, let me clarify one more thing, because this is a good statement, and I think Jerry and I were talking about it on the way out the other night. When you have a five-four vote, that sends another message. That it was very close. So those of us that voted against the budget, which which still would, are recommending even though I hate to even do that, that you, the taxpayers vote for the default budget. If it was 8 nothing recommended by this committee, I don't think, you know, no, it's not... That's a different story. That's a different story. Right. But the message is, I mean, it's very close. And so people look at that and they say, wow, 5 to 4, that's... So we were not totally sure that we were for the budget. So in essence, what we're saying is, you know, the committee recommends it, but many of us feel that that budget wasn't warranted. Mm -hmm. But as Tim said, the law is specifically, I, I understand what, even though it's not right, what we have to do, but I think it sends another message. Well, I okay. think that um, I am, I'm the one that's to blame for this. I, it was my error. I put forth the question, what's the best number we can come up with as a committee? Yeah. But that's not the proper question. The proper question is, what's the best number we can come up with as a committee that we can recommend? That extra qualifier makes the huge difference, okay? So that's what you have to go with. Uh, what's the best number that the committee can come up with that it can recommend? Uh, Frank. Okay, <coughs> so I understand this correctly, okay? I, uh, and please feel free to interject, Brian. If we did not change that number by 30,000 approximately, okay? The 28,178 got changed to 28,141, so it's about approximately 30, 35,000. If we left that alone, then the vote that you took, the five, four, five, three, whatever, could stand. Is that correct? But since we made the change on that, it, it needs to have a, a, a clear support of all of us? No, not all of us. Oh, majority. Okay. Majority. Majority. Yeah. Which we already have, five okay. to four. Okay, okay. Just, I just wanted clarification, that's all. Are you clear now? Yep, okay. clear. Uh, I would just point out one statement. The difference between the selectman's budget and the one recommended by this committee is $35,000. Right. It's not $600,000. All right, but that's uh, 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 Just be clear on this. We took the proposed, the selectman's proposed budget, right. and we ultimately cut it by $50,000. The base number that you see that I yeah. struck, that I, that I scratched out there, yeah. that's the base number that we were working with because we had made some small adjustments as we were going along, okay? But the total adjustment was about 50000 okay. okay? Jerry? Yeah. So, really, really, you just can't suggest that uh, we give $100 above the, uh, the default budget, so to speak, to have that be our budget. I am aware of another court case from a few years ago when I read that uh, the budget committee's budget was nullified by court because they argued uh, starting on the basis of the default budget. And the court said you cannot use the default budget as your basis for creating a proposed budget. You can use anything else, but you can't use that. I, mean, I remember reading that about well, four or five see, years ago. That really speaks to when the review is taking place from the department to department, that's the time to look at those line items, make the recommendations, take a vote on it so that we have a dollar count right away. When that department leaves, we know that we're either plus or minus, if you will, for that number coming in. So at the end, we just roll up those numbers and have exactly 
what we want to reduce the budget by and where it comes from. But at the end, like I was here at the end, it's too late. Too late for a guy like me to come in and do anything because I wasn't in on all the line items. We did make adjustments uh, during the course. As I said, we made about uh, 15000 I guess, uh, in adjustments. There were, there were small, yeah. small amounts. Yeah. I mean, the point is that such motions were not denied. They, they were allowed. And they just didn't occur beyond the description I've already given. There was, I looked through the budget book, there was a myriad, I mean a myriad of line items oh, yeah. that were significantly over what they had spent in 17 and 18. And they were asking for two and three times what they had spent in 17 mm -hmm. and 18. And I, I definitely would have fought that vigorously if they were here, by department, by department. So that budget that they've submitted is, I voted against it, but is significantly uh, overpriced, overcosted. Well, we're all sad that you weren't here during those meetings. I'm sad too, so yeah. to speak. Bob? <laughs> well, I think we got to go forward from here. We yeah. can't go back to September you and can't. start this process it's all over, over again. It's all. We spent three months reducing the budget by $50,000. You may not agree with that, but yeah. that's the outcome. It is what it is. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. It's one conversation. Are you all set, Bob? Yeah. Okay, anybody else? Brian. Uh, you and Jerry, Mr. Chairman, are, are so right on target. Here's the problem. Let's not mislead Bob, okay? He, we Wait, didn't have. Time out. Hold on. Time out. I, I got the floor. We didn't have the tenor of this board to reduce 600000 That was the chairman. If you heard him earlier, if we had had. You got to have the votes. And what's happening is why we need to go after that default issue that I referenced. Until we get that, everything's a. It's like carte blanche. We're going to approve everything. So to say that, because we didn't have the votes, I'm going back to what the chairman has said about recommendation, which he's absolutely right, we have to do. But I think the major point is, to Jerry's point, that there was no flavor for many members of this board to even look into cutting, cutting, cutting. It's mind-boggling to me in this day and age, it's $600,000 proposed budget over the year before. So what I tell people is, and they understand that when I say, we had to recommend it. I'm not recommending it, but believe me, I'm pushing the default budget. But I think the chairman brought up the best point ever in the years that a chairman's been here is that we've got to tackle that default issue with Concord in, in the state legislature. We've got to get this changed so that a Jerry Zanoy can say, you know what? No, this is our recommended default, um, and not just be told what we're going to have. Not a, it's not a state legislature. It's a town. Well, the town of Hampton. Town meeting right. voters. Town have to meeting. Decide. That's what I meant. The legislative body. You know, two years ago when I was at Blue Session, arguing in favor of granting the Budget Committee the default budget authority. Yes. I pointed out that we're basically running a two-legged race on one leg. That's exactly we, right. We only have an opportunity to, to produce half of the budget one article, not the whole budget one article. That's right. Um, so I, I still maintain that is, in fact, true. Bob? As a counterpoint to Brian's comments, Within the last three years, the Budget Committee was reduced by six members by the legislative body and was nearly eliminated and survived by something less than 50 votes at one of the town meetings. So it suggests there's no unanimity that the town is for or against a particular point of view on the Budget Committee. And if you don't like the point of view of someone on the Budget Committee, the process is to through the electoral process, elect someone different. I don't think anyone was speaking about you in the new vote. Jerry. Well, you know, I will say this. The last two years, Steve had it last year, Tim had it this year. There's been order here. Order. Okay? When we had all the members here, what, 12 or 13, it was anarchy. And we had this, this, this room was, you know, people were speaking over people, uh, hogging the microphone, hogging and taking all these minutes. It was out of control. I think a reduction, it was good. Now we've got some good administrative efforts being done by Steve and Tim. Now we just got to get our act together, those people who are on the budget committee, to do good homework, good analysis, yes. bring in good recommendations, and stick to them. Don't flip-flop around at the end and say, no, I'm going to vote for the town budget. Stick to the recommendations that have been made, votes taken, costs submitted, that have been reduced, or in some cases maybe added to even, like the cemetery situation in certain cases, certain line items have to be added to. But, you know, that's the next step that has to be taken. We now have order. 
Now let's get down to some analytical business. Yeah, well, I think we're getting a little bit far astray from the DRA communication, but just to wrap that, that up, yeah. uh, there are those who think that uh, the reduction of the budget committee was somehow a punishment on the budget committee, and they hold that very fixed in their brain. And, and there were many who voted to reduce it with that in mind, it's just a, a hatred for the budget committee, mm -hmm. so let's get rid of it, because I hate it. Um, but that actually, the idea of reducing the budget committee, uh, well, surprised everyone who's listening, actually came from me. And I had been neutral on that issue all along. I pointed out to the chairman at the time that if we don't start getting this committee better organized, right, that I will move to reduce the budget committee size. Because if you can't, if you can't get maintain order with 15 members, no matter what you do, but we haven't tried everything yet, so let's try some things. Well, she had mentioned that possibility to someone upstairs, and that someone upstairs took it as an opportunity to punish the budget committee for the decisions and questions the budget committee was asking. But I personally, and I said so at the delivery session, I am completely neutral on what size the committee is. It doesn't matter to me. And as I pointed out to those who love to hate the budget committee and certain members on the budget committee, such as perhaps me, that with less members, I'll have a bigger voice, so I appreciate the reduction of <coughs> membership uh, from that level. I don't like the idea that the voters' representation has been diminished, diluted as a consequence. I don't like that, but there may be, there may be no other alternative uh, on, the, on, on the immediate horizon other than what we're right, right now doing. David. Historically. And I don't have the figures, but I'm going to ask the people over there before, because as <coughs> Jerry pointed out last week, it's like five and a half million dollars in the other items that were on the ballot. The total, uh, total warrants. I don't know if I have that number. Five, five point five. Don't need to be exact. Yeah. It was for the warrant articles. Yeah. My question is. Three Five million, million dollars. Three million one sixty-seven. Is that just the operating budget? That's the warrant school? articles. Yeah, uh, that warrant. That's, that that includes the town and the school. Three Check million. out your screen. Check out the screen. This is the MS seven thirty-seven that Christy sent earlier today, and you can see the budget. Is our budget number there, right here? Yeah. yeah. Underneath that is two and a half million dollars, roughly, in special warrant articles, and another three hundred fifty thousand, roughly, in individual articles. No. So it's slightly on. less than three million budget warrant articles. Yep. So there you go. Is that typical? If you went back the last ten years, the percentage of, of the warrant articles versus the budget, the operating budget of the town. There is no school. relationship between the budget and the warrant articles, oh. in the sense of that you, you couldn't do an analysis that you're yeah, describing. So dollars. Well, <laughs> let me put it this way: three million dollars. It seems to be a extra is a rather large amount. Well, it's usually been larger. Is that not true, Mike? Uh, I don't, I don't Sometimes it depends yeah. on what you, what the yeah. request. Uh, yeah. Sometimes, but we have a very open discussion on the warrant articles. Of course, yeah. as well yeah. as the budget. <coughs> well, not as closely to the budget as we probably should have done, going line by line when we're looking at them, as Jerry points out. Well, I. Well, I think in part uh, you're raising an issue, uh, which is maybe we're getting lost among the weeds because we're going line by line, uh, and we never have a real good chance. Well, he was comparing his weeds. <laughs> we don't talking we never have a real good We never real have a good, real good chance as a committee. Right. Come on, guys. We never have a real good chance as a committee to look at the whole forest. Right. We're, we're so much focused on individual trees in the forest, and perhaps we're not taking enough time to look at the, the, whole, the, the forest as a whole. Maybe that's what you're suggesting? Okay, yeah, and probably future committees may want to, you know, take that into consideration as they do their scheduling. Um, but I think that's a valid point. Um, so back to the DRA communication, guys. Hopefully, we all set an understanding what they're communicating. Yeah, I, do, you, do we all understand that? Yes. Because we need to have some institutional memory. So do we have to correct our goal? No. No, it's already recommended. I, what I'm concerned with is institutional memory. The budget committee needs to have a memory of this reality so it doesn't error as I have erred. 
But when you're back next year, you can keep I'm us informed. <laughs> Tim, you got another year to go or two or what? I'm, 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 are, you, are you done? Yeah. Uh, the sure bottom line is, is that things like HamptonBud.com are an ability, a vehicle. Yes. David, they are a vehicle. HamptonBud.com is a vehicle to preserve institutional memory. You see. Because as you accumulate this, the data in a vehicle like HamptonBud.com, you have this historical memory that you can reference. You see. And, and so that's what's been lacking in this budget committee, and I identified it like day one. Because I see every every year we have the same questions being raised about process, same questions being raised from various departments and all that sort of stuff. Well, guess what? If you remembered, if that is to say, if you had an institutional memory, you would already know these answers. You say. Well, when I joined three years ago, you had no in, you had no vehicle to refer to. You brought up the, uh, uh, in a, to Mary Louise. What's the process? And you asked, what's the process? And there was no process. It was just like shooting from the hip. Well, the rules of Last the, year, the, the same thing happened David, in a different way. The rules of a committee change every year. Right. And what I was asking about were the rules uh, of the committee. Okay. What we're talking about here is the process of, of the law, in terms of what the law demands of us or expects from us. And the law is one thing. But well, no. So that needs to be remembered. Right. All right. The rules... Yeah. You're going to have a meeting in March, right after the election, like um, seven days after the election, I believe. And at that time, you'll have what's referred to as a reorganization meeting, in which you'll elect a chair and a vice chair and you know, all that sort of stuff. Eventually, you'll have to decide what the rules will be for that year, which I strongly recommend because there will be people who will assume they're the same as they were last year, which they never are. There are always some variations. So get them stated up front as much as possible. And, uh, and move on so everyone has the same playbook, so to speak. Everyone having the same information, whether it's rules or, or what I'm sharing with you now with regards to the communications I've had on these various points. It's important that you all have the same information at the same time as much as possible. Otherwise, what happens is you end up arguing over things that should not be argued over. As I said to DRA, I'm looking for facts, and I've said to others, not just them, I look for facts. I don't look to argue about facts because facts are not subject to argument. If they are subject to argument, then they're not facts. And so I just want the facts. And I'm conveying to you what the facts are uh, as I've learned them. What is this, this dragnet? <laughs> yeah. so, so it's not alternative facts. <laughs> right, let's keep rolling. Enough on the DRA communication. I guess you guys all understand all that, that communication. We're all good. Okay. The, uh, the uh, tally vote recommendations uh, was also something I discussed. I had a, a meeting with Fred, uh, the town manager, in his office yesterday uh, afternoon. And when I got home, there was a communication with DRA that I described earlier in which tally votes were also discussed with DRA. Now, as you know, Fred made a statement at the public hearing which caused me to con be concerned about it mm -hmm. when he said a tie vote is... No vote. Yeah, no vote, no vote at all, or something that I can play it if you want. But I'm sure you don't want me to do that. We don't want that. So I, uh, I went through over the weekend. I went through the history of of our ballots for the last several years and found many examples of tie votes being reflected as not recommended. But they, they're not recommended. And so when I raised that to Fred, he he was very forthright, and very quick, and he said, "Well, we've been doing it wrong." We've just been doing it wrong. And so I asked him, are we going to have nothing on, on, on the articles in which we have a tie vote? And he said, no, what's gonna, it's, gonna not, it's not going to say recommended. It's not going to say not recommended. What it's going to say is budget committee 4-4. Four, four. That's it. The word recommend and the word not recommend, or the phrase not recommend, neither one will appear there, just the numbers. Yeah. Did okay. you talk to DRA on that? Um, I did. Uh, they don't have any issue with that particular scenario. Um, I did ask a couple of questions uh, of DRA regarding that. I said, well, what if the committee had a rule, uh, a committee rule, that said that any time we have a motion to recommend and it's a tie vote, it means it's not recommended. 
in, in, in DRE's response was, well, that would probably work. And then I pointed out the new law uh, about us having the ability to instruct the governing body to put our tally votes on the ballot. And I said, so what if the budget committee tomorrow night, meaning tonight, had a motion that says we're instructing the governing body to put our tally votes on the ballot and here are our tally votes with the word not recommended on the tie votes. Would that work? And he said, yeah. So that's what I got on the tally vote question from DRA as well as from Fred. So any discussions? Blood. I would take issue with that under the new statute, which says the budget committee may require its vote to be placed on the warrant. Mm -hmm. But it's, the operative word is tally. The budget committee may require its tally of votes to be placed on the warrant. It does not indicate that on a tie vote, the committee has the discretion to interpret that vote for it or against it. An argument can be made either way. What if for? It should have been recommended. What if for? In most circumstances, there's a mechanism to break the tie. There isn't in this circumstance because the committee had an even number of members after Brian died for a period of time. But I'm not at all sure that I would agree with the, the word tally in the statute can go beyond its meaning in the statute, which is to represent how the members voted. Okay, so you don't agree with DRA's point on that. Yeah. Jerry, did you have something? I don't, I, I don't know. The tie vote to me it doesn't, in other words, their presentation didn't, the presentation, the, the warrant article words, the presentation in the warrant article did not suffice to pass. And we ended up in a so not recommended is, is how I would land on that if it was a four to four, or five to five, or whatever it is. I mean, it would have to be the majority to be recommended. Or would the majority be not recommended? So we have two warrant articles on the screen there. Yeah. The B DPW uh, yeah. purchases and the information technology upgrades, they were both tied with us. They were both four to four. I mean, so those are the only ones that are impacted to, on this particular discussion or this instant in time. You know, the people are going to see four to four. And right. they're going to they're gonna come away with the sentiment. I got much more comfortable when Fred said the number was going to be four four there. Uh, more than my imagining, which was there'd be nothing there at all. Yeah. Um, well, so. the statute requires the tally be recorded there. Right. Um, uh, Brian. Yeah, Are I, you done, Jerry? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm done. Okay. I, you know, to Jerry's point, too, and, and I think we know where this is coming from. Um, there's little faith in the voters on behalf of the town management in this town, so they're going to play all these little schemes to try to do this or that. And, you know, the town manager says, I, I find it interesting, 12 years he's been here. Well, we were doing it the wrong way. Really? When you and I were on the board, we had ties, and it went as not recommended. This is foolishness. And I'll tell you, I do agree with the chairman, if it comes down to that, that we have, four, at least it says four to four. But this is the stuff that's going on now. And the public sees through it. When, when you and I had that conversation, I'm like, are you kidding me? And now, the same people who sit here and tell us we have to listen to DRA, the same ones, well, DRA says we could do what the chairman does. Or recommended. We could put not, not recommended based on our uh, votes here to make it. The, the actual wording, not the tally vote. We know. I, I just find it, it's just mind-boggling. It never ends. Well, you know, I would, I would have asked Fred to show me the RSA or the statute. Or well, the that's policy. what I asked. Where is it in writing that I, can, that I cannot do that? Right. It's in chapter no, hold on. I, you know, I was inclined to maybe do that. Even in the public hearing, I was very much inclined to because do that's that. That's a subjective but, position. Jerry, but I didn't want to disrupt the uh, meeting. Um, Knowing that I'd be talking to DRA on the other matter, I figured I'd just raise the issue with them, uh, and, and so I did. I did not request a uh, citation of the statute itself, and perhaps I should have, but I didn't. See, so I failed again. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a subjective position. That's correct. Yeah. It, it, unless it's tied to something, it's subjective. Yeah, where's the statute? 246 yeah. is the statute that was amended this year. 
That's for tally votes. It's nothing yeah. to do with not recommended. No. So it hold says on. what you may put on the warrant is the tally. It doesn't say your interpretation of the tally, your side of the vote if it's tied. It says the word tally. And statutes must be literally interpreted the way they're written. So do we take all, can I just make a comment? No, do we take no, all the recommendations no, no, no. out so, and not put any recommendations? So, no. So therefore, wait a minute, wait a minute, Bob. So what you're saying is, is that our vote not to recommend the budget was okay because it doesn't matter. No, I am saying that you cannot interpret a tie vote as being for the thing voted on or against it. Right, and that's what I'm saying. If, if we voted in the majority not to support the number mm -hmm. and the word not recommended was not there, it was right. just a tally vote, as yeah. you would suggest, then I guess DRA wouldn't have a problem with us having a majority of the com committee not supporting the number. Well, that's true of any. But, but, that, but DRA was very explicit in saying you have to recommend it. Well, I would think that so you're... There is, so there is, by DRA's direction, very explicitly in, in the communication, yeah. there is a, a need to have the word recommended at least on the budget warrant article. And, well, and so why would that not apply to other warrant articles? That's I would say the appropriate place to further re research this would have been the Municipal Association <laughs> as the legal branch, not DRA as the administrative, how do you write the warrant branch. It's a legal issue, how to interpret what the term tally meant on the statute which the legislature passed. Well, I look forward to your research. I just gave you my research. It didn't appear you looked forward to it. <laughs> I didn't hear any research. What I heard was your opinion, which is no, fine. I read the statute. That's how you do research. You go read okay. the statute, and then you take the common language of that statute, and you interpret it as reasonably as you can the way the court but, would interpret it. But why, can I ask a question? What is Jerry's point? Why should you or anybody else have to do that? We have a town manager subjectively saying, no, it isn't, uh, we were making mistakes all along. We've been doing not recommended on tie votes for years. But you have not even mentioned that at the first session of you each year. You said 246, right? Yeah, I think it's 246. So what do you mean the first session of every year? In the administrative re uh, election in March has never said, we will follow the following rules. If you are on the losing side of a vote, you may not vote for reconsideration. If it's a tie vote, how does either side vote if there's not a winning side? These sort of things should be discussed each year. In the genesis, what's the structure and reason for these rules? Where do they come from? Is it Robert's Rules, Parliamentary Procedure? Are there bylaws written 30 years ago for the budget committee that are? Well, he's saying, uh, well, uh, to your point, the chairman is saying we could do that tonight or going forward. But I still like the fact that four to four, the public's going to know. Yeah, I mean, of course, the, the public's going to know on every vote. Bob, is this, is this the... Uh, Legislation you're referring to? Yeah, 246. Right. Yeah. Relative to penalties for corrupt practices. Yeah. This bill provides that a public servant who remains silent and fails to be accountable shall be guilty of fraud. Okay. Maybe that should be invoked. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's House Bill 1392. Oh, I thought it was just 246. Okay. House Bill, what? 13? 13? 1392. Yes, stick to our tie votes. Just get sent a message. Hmm? Just say yes, sir. In the year of our law, 2018. Gee, you don't need to read all that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what they voted on. If you don't want to hear it, fine. The legislative body of any town, school district, or village district may vote to require that all votes by an advisory budget committee, which is not us, Right. Exeter is. So I will continue on to right. the what gets to us. There's a second paragraph to that, a second part to the paragraph. And we're only talking about two articles. No, it's the principle. Yeah, it is the principle. That's exactly yeah. right. It shouldn't even be, it should be a non-issue. It's not recommended, period. All votes of the governing body relative to the budget items or any warrant articles shall be recorded votes and the numerical tally of any such vote shall be printed in the town, school district, or village district warrant next to the affected warrant article. Unless the legislature votes otherwise, if the town or school district has not voted to require tallies to be printed in the warrant article next to the governing body 
may so do on its initiative. Well, the Municipal Budget Committee may do so on its own yeah. initiative. Well, I don't, that's exactly what that statute says. Right. So, so you your argument, which I do understand, Bob, mm -hmm. is the tally votes mean numbers, and that's all that should be there is the number and the mm -hmm. source of the numbers, namely the Budget Committee mm -hmm. in this case. And I understand that, but we don't do that. As it is to say, it's not done that way yet. Maybe it ought to be done that way. Well, I'm saying the uh, statute says If you it take it literally, way. you're correct, I think. Because it does say tally votes, which to me implies numbers only. Yeah. Okay? Okay. So there's no dispute, Bob. Okay. All right. Well, you know, <laughs> Jerry. there's one other, you know, <laughs> I'll give you an analogy here. We, we worked to very, very definite specifications in industry BAE for the last 15, 20 years. But these very detailed and specific specifications, where there is ambiguity or silence, the contractor's wise judgment shall impose itself. In other words, you can't describe everything, perhaps, that's going to be, you're going to be confronted with. Credit, but who so would be you're going to have to bring your own level of expertise. Would who would be the contractor? In this case, the this board. Well, the contractor yeah. is the one that actually does the work, right? Right. And so we're who doing does the, the actual work of printing up the ballot? The actual work of, of assuring that the specs are adhered to. So if they're ambiguous in any way, it's up to the contractor to choose the direction. I understand what you're saying, Jerry. And but that's you're saying I, your analogy, if it were carried out in our situation, would be the Board of Selectmen would decide this matter, which they do. Because the Board of Selectmen is the one that creates the ballot. They decide what's what you know how it's going to be printed and all that stuff. No, we're talking about recommendations here, or not recommendations. Well, that's part of what's printed on the ballot. Yeah. So yeah. we, if so we made a selectment, we're, we're that saying your contractor because it's not clear here and it's ambiguous. We could put not recommended based on four to four. Yeah. Legally, courts interpret the general meaning of a word by using the dictionary meaning and description of that word. So. Unless it's defined in Black's Law Dictionary, that's right. Yeah. Which is a dictionary. It's four to four. But it's not a common. People are going to see it. It's a legal yeah, dictionary. Yeah, this, for this year it's four to four. People will see it. And People are going to see it. Yeah. And, and, and next year if you set the rules, you set the we'll rules. We'll set the rules. I don't, I don't know that we have any issue other than, you know. This, well, I'd like to see it not recommended because we always did it, but I'm still happy with four to four. I mean, got it up on the screen. Yep. You can see the screen. <laughs> it clearly shows that we have had passed votes with ties. Oh, of course. And I put down the exact verbiage that was on the ballot at the time. Yeah. In every case, it was a tie vote, not recommended by whoever. And by the way, can I point out excellent work? Look at the SAU 21 contracts that ended with a tie that did not get recommended. Look at this. Not recommended by the Budget Committee, C. Yeah. <laughs> three to three. It's not recommended. And that was recent. I mean, I think... We'll yeah, the, uh, I was looking over these... Uh, Work articles for the school. I would a disco cop got rejected too. To read oh, yeah. Yeah. Those are from prior legislative body votes. This statute wasn't oh. enacted at the time of those votes. Oh, excuse me, Bob, it was. The only, oh. the yeah. only, well, let me finish. Because I actually did the work on this a couple months ago when we brought up the issue of getting the tally votes on the SAU 90 ballot. And you can see here, if you look at the screen, it says right here, matters added to the current law in bold italics. The only thing in bold italics is the or budget municipal budget committee. The rest of it is already was already in place for many years. That's okay. right. This so that's the only thing that changed was those words or the municipal budget committee. They put the tally of the vote on the warrant. Right. That's what was added. No, no. Only the word, it's right there, Bob. It's bold italics or the budget, municipal budget committee may. Okay? Yeah. That's all that's been added is all the municipal budget committee. Nothing else has been added. The rest of it is just law that already existed. Okay? okay? Well, then it's been poorly applied for years. Now, well, Fred pretty much said that to me. We, we, we were wrong uh, with regard to well, the tie vote. addressing it now. They should have brought it up years ago. Well, whatever. I mean, yeah, we, I all, we all receive enlightenment at different times, you know, and so the enlightenment occurred in, in this, this year, no big deal. 
as far as I can see, anyway. Because we asked the questions, that's why. No, we didn't ask anything about well, no. this. No. What well, I'm saying is what we're doing tonight, we're discussing these things more than other boards we're have. We're grasping and understanding right. what's happening is what we're trying to do, yeah. And I noticed here that when I did this up over the weekend, that we actually had three that were tied. One was with the master plan, but that's not showing up on on my listing for some reason, so I want to check that. That's the plan was tied? Yeah. For some, for some reason, I had that listed as a 2 6 vote. Let me. No, it wasn't tied, it was 2 6. Yeah. Yeah, so it was my error when I did the initial yeah, right. report. Two, six. The yeah, first that, vote was 4 There was four. no desire right. on yeah. that at all. Yeah, two, so six. let me just uh, wipe that one out of this report so I don't screw myself up later. Okay. Okay, so, uh, you yeah. know, I also found one that was a, uh, a petition. I didn't put it on the report, but. I found a petition warrant article from a couple of years ago when the Board of Selectmen voted their tally vote was 005. Yep. And it was listed as not recommended. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the ultimate non vote so, was 005. So there you go. <laughs> but in any case, we now have new enlightenment. Hopefully, it will be retained in our institutional memory. We'll deal with that next year and make that right up front. Yeah, you're gonna have to deal with it by rule. Oh, I agree with uh, it. But certainly, I was I was remiss. Uh, again, I made an error by reporting to you guys that a tie vote on a motion to recommend means not recommended. So I was in error because I was doing what we too often do, which is look at what we've always done rather than arguing for what ought to be done. I think where Fred's coming from is basically an argument of what ought to be done. Where, well, Bob's, where Bob's coming from is just put the numbers up there. I think that might ought to be done, too. But remember, don't be too hard on yourself, because DRA said we could do it. Oh, I'm not hard on myself. I admit to my errors all the time. Just that you guys... But I think, to Jerry's always point, that the manager is was very subjective on this. And I asked, I told uh, you, <laughs> where's the statute? I mean, this right. is what happens at every board in town. That's a follow-up. That's do. a definite follow-up for the next budget. Oh, I understand that. Budget, budget committee. But it's all when it favors anything. But that's another subject for another time. I, I got the facts as much as I could. I wouldn't have time to go through research and law. There are all kinds of other things going on. Yeah. Anything else on the... Should do the rule, the rules for next year... Can they put, can they be put together so that the, the new budget committee coming in? Well, at the reorg meeting we do it. At the reorg, yeah, but you don't want to develop them at that meeting necessarily. Well, you, you have, have to, to come in with a piece of paper saying it's a whole these are suggested rules. Right. It's these a whole new board. Yeah, I know, but still, you can have suggested rules. Oh yeah. And you can uh, see if they would adopt all of them, or maybe have a discussion on some of them, or whoever the chair is. Otherwise, you're coming in with a blank piece of paper, and two hours or three hours are going to go by. What are you going to have? Oh, there'll, there'll be discussion, I can guarantee you that. Yeah. Okay, so we're all understanding now on the yeah, I mean, Kelly vote not recommend, recommend yep. stuff, right? Yep. During my conversation with DRA, I learned some other things <laughs> in which I've been in error on. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I love finding myself in error. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because you get the chance to learn something. You know, it's the most enjoyable thing in life, in my opinion, is learning stuff. Anyway, uh, I found out that when you go to the, we can make changes to our vote tonight because our final work is not considered complete until tomorrow, according to the statute. That's why, that's why our last meeting was on this day. Okay. Um, and after this, we cannot change our votes. No, I don't know what to Let me finish. About Let me finish. Yeah. We cannot change our votes except after the delivery session. But here's the qualifiers that I was not aware of before, and I should have been in there, and I want the institutional memory to realize you can only change your tally votes on the, after the literal session if you, of course, have a legitimate meeting, which we have scheduled, so we're okay there. But also, the uh, article in question has to have been amended during the delivery session. Oh, okay, yeah. Right? So that's requirement number one. Requirement number two, it has to be a special law and article. It can't be just any money law and article. We can, if it's not a special money law and article, we can't re-vote on that tally vote, no matter how much it's been amended. That's right. And third point, the budget law and article is not a special money law article. 
And I put this straight out to them as an example. So if we put out a, a, a I said to them, if we put out a proposed budget, the budget committee, that we recommend at $28 million, it goes to the Lewis session, the Lewis session add $2 million to it. Are you saying that we cannot retake our recommended vote, our tally vote? We cannot. Because it's not a special warrant on it. So this is kind of a weirdness when you think about it. They could literally take a $30 million budget and, and add you know, a huge amount or subtract a huge amount. And our recommendation is going to stand based on the original number, but on the ballot it's going to appear we're recognizing or recommending this new number, which is really a weirdness kind of thing when you think about it. David? What differentiates a special warrant? I have not noticed any vocabulary <coughs> stating this is a special warrant. They're just warrant articles that the town put over the school put over. Well, so how do we get this word special? How do we determine? We it? get it from on the screen. You'll see there is section 32.7, uh, which speaks about uh, appropriations in general as well as uh, special warrant articles. Excuse me, I'm on the wrong one. Definitions. 32.3, definition is special money one article right there. Define. I'll make it bigger so you can more easily read it. Is that okay? You can read that okay? Come Need a little bit bigger. Okay. Please. That's good. Thank you. So a petition money one article is by definition always a special one article. Call, uh, appropriations uh, that require a loan of any type are a special one article. What, what, what is that RSA number or what is that? 32 colon 3. Okay. Uh, moving money from one fund to another or otherwise to or from a fund. So anything to do with a fund, an existing fund, is going to be a special money one article. Okay. Or if the governing body just labels it as a special one article, which by the way, on my phone call with DRA, they said that all special one articles should say, they should have the word special in it. But I don't see that happening very often. Or it's a non-lapsing or non-transferable appropriation. So that's the definition of a special one article, David, right from the law. Uh, and of course, the last one is calls for appropriation of an amount for a capital project under 32 colon 7, which is why I had 32 colon 7 here, which speaks about an appropriation. And basically, it's talking about appropriations for capital purchases of projects. Okay. So the budget one article itself doesn't fall in any of those categories, does it? So therefore, it's not a special warrant article. Therefore, we cannot re-vote on it no matter how bad or how good it's been uh, amended at the Lewis session. That's just a fact. It's been lost uh, to, on me. I mean, was it four years ago, the Budget Committee, created, I think, cut like 1.7, 1.2 million dollars off the budget. And we went to the Lewis session, and of course it was jam-packed, uh, and it, they put all the money back in. Right. And then after that was over with, we had a budget committee meeting and we changed our tally vote on it to not recommend, which we weren't supposed to be able to do. And no one, no one, no one said, hey, you can't do that because, well, this is another example of not having institutional memory. So I'm just emphasizing this to try to make sure we have the institutional memory about what we can and cannot do uh, according to the law as okay. we best understand it. Can you identify what warrants on this year's warrant are special warrant articles? Yeah, well, that became a question which is in my mind, and I'm going to speak to that okay. in a few minutes. Uh, but and the general answer is no. <laughs> other than <laughs> other than employing the definitions that I just referred to in the law, right? Because the word special, you know, is not you know out there. So that's why DRA was suggesting that they should all be special. But apparently, they have been identified, and I'll go into that later. Um, Anything else on deliberate, deliberate, the, the deliberative session, legally known as town meeting session one. We commonly call it deliberative session. 
but the legal name is Town Meeting Session 1. All right? Am I right, Bob? Yes, you're right. Try to be legally correct whenever yeah, possible, right, That's Bob? a relief. <laughs> okay. Um, have I missed anything else that was of import to you guys? Um, we can change our vote on anything if we as a board choose to do so at this meeting, according to DRA. Uh, I, right? I, I'm just saying we can. Didn't say we should. I mean, should we had a public meeting here. The Jerry, was here. Jerry, I'm not saying we can. I'm not saying we should. I'm not saying we can't or, or we shouldn't. I'm simply stating a fact. Okay. If we want to as a body, All we right, can then. change any of these votes tonight this is our last shot to do so I would suggest that we probably just let stuff stand the way they are because there is a special consideration on the tie votes given the change of our understanding and whether or not we want to you know re-vote on that on those two that are a tie vote because when we did vote we were voting under the false assumption that a tie vote meant not recommended so I think there's a basis uh, for for saying it's okay to revote on that. But again, the body is going to have to say you guys are going to have to decide whether or not you want to revote on it on those two. I'll make a motion. We don't revote. Right, you second. do not revote. We do not revote. Okay. We, well, you we don't go need, with this you right do not here. need a motion for it. So no one wants to revote it. No, right? I okay. don't want to revote. So we're all set. Yep. So we're clear yep. on all of our tally yep. votes. Yep. Uh, and you have you have all looked at the. Tally votes as yes. presented on HamptonBud.com, right? And they are all accurate and they reflect our votes accurately. And so we can report that that's where our votes are uh, to um, the uh, to management, correct? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, uh, we did get um, the 737 form, which Christy finished today. Yeah, I saw that. Which yeah. is. Uh, I didn't look at it, but. Yeah. The MS uh, seven thirty seven, just like the airplane jury. <laughs> yeah, is that yes. that's the what is returned to the uh, by DRA to the town or what is that? That is the form that's submitted uh, to DRA. Yes, submitted to DRA. Yes, yeah. and it requires our signature. So that's why I have this particular page up because it's the image of, of the document. Right. And hopefully, it's not too small for you guys. I'll make it bigger. Yeah. Scroll up there a little bit. Okay. You all read that okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Pretty straightforward. So there is our uh, appropriation, which is the budget appropriation for 28141882, which is in fact the number that we have in our budget warrant article. Okay. I'm going to make this just a tad smaller. And. I'll try the uh, magnifier and see if that would be better for you guys. I can see it pretty good. Okay, so hopefully that's still big enough, right? Yeah, that's very good, yeah. Okay. Um, so the operating budget appropriations is the budget number that we proposed in the Warren article, and that's the correct number. You'll see right underneath that, David, is special warrant articles yeah. for close to $2.5 million. And then underneath that is individual warrant articles, which I presume means non-special warrant articles of something like close to three fifty thousand. So obviously, someone has identified which ones are not special. Which ones they are, I don't know. So the total appropriations that are on the table include all of the warrant articles and the operating and the proposed operating budget, which is close to thirty one million dollars. You all are reading and analyzing, so I'm giving you time to do that. Let me see. We okay we okay with this? Pretty one? straight numbers. You got this on your Jerry, email. Jerry, you right? had an email from him. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. So you don't need to write them down now. Um, no, so no, I just, I'm just, <laughs> just, just looking at. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so any, any, any thoughts on the 737? It seems accurate enough to me in terms of the bottom line numbers that are here. Absolutely, it's right. required. Uh, 
So we're all going to sign this and leave this behind for uh, um, yep. Christy to pick up Christy. tomorrow. For someone, but. The only comment I would have is we, the appropriation is thirty million nine seventy eight. But the amount to be raised by taxes is twenty two two eighty six seven one seven. So apparently there's an eight million seven hundred thousand dollar revenue source to reduce the appropriation by. Well it's a collection of revenue sources. Yeah. yeah. So I will pass this around you guys can sign it. Uh, we only need five, but you can all sign oh, it. Oh, I definitely want. want to sign it, yep. Um, and I, I think well, the schedule, um, we're all done with the tally, tie tally book, right? Yes. Okay. Um, the new business uh, schedule, uh, we have a couple things. Uh, next meeting is not kind of the little session meeting. The next meeting is the February 9th, in which we'll all enjoy the wisdom of the 19th. That's what I said. Didn't you? you said ninth. Oh, you said that's ninth. Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday night, February nineteenth. Thank you, Brian. You're absolutely correct. Uh, I, I, I just had Lincoln on my mind for some reason. Anyway. <laughs> yes, February nineteenth. Yes, you're right. In which we will all be regaled with the wisdom of the village district in, in, in that meeting. But there are a couple of other things too. I got a request from Jay Dina. To take five or ten minutes to do something on flooding uh, with the budget committee. Thank you. And I'm thinking that probably February might be best if we want to do that. Uh, Village district should not take long, right, Bob? No. Yeah. So, you know, we'll have time to deal with some other stuff. And so I'm thinking if you guys are okay, we'll throw, throw Jay Dean around there. Yeah, we'll see. No, no objection to that. that. Okay. Flooding and is important. A couple months ago, uh, Regina wanted to do a thing on some conference she went to, she wanted to do a report to the budget committee. Uh, what conference was that? Uh, something about drinking water, I think. Yeah. So, um, the only thing I can think of is say, well, given that we're in the budget season, maybe best wait to February for the uh, village district meeting. And and now I'm putting it out to you whether, guys, you you, know, you want to have that. She says about a half hour on that. She wanted to ask to ask her how much time she would need. What would she be talking about? Uh, drinking water, I guess. Yeah. Drinking water? Yeah. Probably. Probably. Yeah. The wells. Yeah. Well, she went to a conference and she's mm -hmm. going to you know, tell us all the wisdom mm -hmm. she gained at the conference. And I think it was on drinking water. Mm -hmm. it, it was. That's a fairly important issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like water. Water is very important to yes, me. Yes, it is. Some say you have to have it to live. Indeed. You know, I just learned last weekend from my wife, who's a registered nurse, that the first organ that fails when you're dehydrated is your kidney. After that, everything else fails. But the first one, it goes to the kidneys. Anyway, I thought that would be interesting for you guys to know. <laughs> David, do you have something to say? Not at all. Well, dehydration is a result of not having sufficient water in your body. I understand way, that. For those who might not know. Thank your you. Body <laughs> is made up of two -thirds so water is very important. Bob is correct. Two-thirds of your body is water. <laughs> Yeah, actually, we seven, got off the track. <laughs> that's old oh, school. That's that? old school, Dave. The Can actual number is seventy percent. Sorry, yeah. but some of it's close enough, fella. If yeah, you yeah, live at the first. beach, some of it's salt. Not for not for those who are working on a budget committee that absolutely demands precision. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on how packed you are, how much water, extra water you're calling. So everything's different. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna have Jay Dina come in, and the village district come in, Jay Dina come in, and Regina. Is that correct? With her, is, is there an objection to her spending time on that? No, the only thing about Jay, when I watched the pre, it's, it's the same presentation. He was like an hour and twenty minutes at your meeting, so I think we gotta. No, he told me he needs five ten minutes. That's oh. what he told me. I oh, he's him. not gonna do what they did at the village. No. At our meeting, he got into the zoning article oh. proposals. Yeah. yeah, that's quite quite different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think this is something to do with Seacoast Estuary or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, that's a committee that's just been formed. Yeah. In this I think he basically wants to sell us. Yeah, he works. Jay, Jay is good. Jay's a good guy. Yeah, he yeah. is. <clears throat> no, I have no problem. Okay. Uh, and one other thing for the village district meeting, uh, I would also like time, and I, I would also like to give other members time to make comments on the entire year and project into the next year some thoughts 
that should be considered. Uh, I particularly have a desire to do that, uh, and I certainly think other members should be welcome to do that. Is there any objection to that process? No. Okay. All right. Anything else on the February 19 meeting that you guys would like to see on the agenda? No? Okay. So our next meeting is at the little session. I have it on our schedule at 2 p.m. That's just a time, I guess, because last <laughs> well, year we, we started at 8.30. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, last year we actually stopped at a record time. It's like 2 p.m. It was like 2 at the early. Yeah, yeah, yeah so average is 5. Yeah. We so I, I thought 2 p.m. Mike and I remember some years, 8 yeah, o'clock. I, I thought 2 p.m. was a good time to pick because, well, it's, it's a good time for everybody, I, basically. Um, Brian. I just want to uh, bring up something, uh, and I don't know if members here, I mean, just because I don't know when we're going to we're going to meet again in February, but I want to mention the passing of Doug Mellon, who um, was for 18 years was the operations manager at DPW. Um, quite a career before he came here was he was town planner in Exeter, New Hampshire, and uh, he had uh, yeah he had Lou Gehrig's uh, he had uh, yeah I think they call ALS, it ALS uh, and it was just it was quite a write up in the paper and he was really a Renaissance guy he moved up north. Quite a skier and uh, traveled around the world. And he was, uh, but M Mike and I especially worked with Doug for a long time, and uh, I just want to thank him for all the work he did. And he'll he he's been missed since he left in 2008, but he was a good guy, and just wanted to mention that uh, that somebody that during our tenure worked with uh, worked yeah. with Doug. So. Where was the writer, uh, Brian? Uh, I forget where I saw it. I've been reading the Portsmouth papers. And it was in the Hampton Union. The Hampton uh, Union, I think. This past Friday, uh, Friday or Sunday, I forgot. Yeah. Oh, it would have been Sunday. Friday if it was the I think it was Friday, uh, but uh, many of us worked with Doug, uh, and yeah. he worked at the time when John Hangen was here, too, in uh, yeah. 18 years with Hampton. And, uh, okay, uh, anything else? Our next meeting is Saturday. A week from Saturday at 2 p.m. That's the deliberate session. Oh, yeah. Well, that's if it ends by 2 p.m. We're yeah. going to meet at 2 p.m. And then, then we will continue the meeting if necessary. <laughs> but if we need a quorum in order to meet. So. Oh, I'll be there. Uh, and, I, and I have to put out a notice, which of course I will dutifully do. Uh, and I need a time. So I pick 2 p.m. You guys want a different number? You want 8.30 a.m.? Jerry? Uh, Brian? Jerry, uh, yes. Call me, Jerry. I'm afraid you'll be lonely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm there at 8 Who knows a meeting man by noon? I yeah. doubt it, but it could. So, I mean, you want me so to change the time so of day? Hang around till 2 o'clock? Well, well, that would be the effect, but yeah. I doubt we're going to finish it. Well, well, it's possible, but I doubt You never it. know. You never know. All right, so give me a time then. You, you can set a time, and actually watching the TV, you get a pretty good sense of when the actual end yeah. occurs. Because the notice has to go out 24 hours Yeah, he has to put the you notice You can set up. the time. Noon time? That being there yeah. at 2 Because you know, a break for I'd, lunch. I'd set it at noon time or 1 o'clock. Noon? Noon? Because it's, you know, it's a break for lunch, lunch usually. Bob usually it, breaks at noon, so. Yeah. So, noon yeah. So, so, but so you're going to sit there for four or five hours if it goes to five? If no, just yeah. continue it to a subsequent <laughs> time. Yeah, yeah, well, at that time, we'll have an estimate as when it will be done, you know. Right. But actually, we don't we don't need to continue. We can say, well, there's nothing else coming up that's of importance to the budget committee. We can just consider what's already been done and be done with it. So was it one o'clock? I think I've been hearing noon. Noon. High noon. Well, High noon. They go to lunch. Post it for <laughs> right. Well, that's why we were. Lunch is optional, though, Dave. It's not required. Uh, well, they usually break though for. They usually break half for an hour or half an hour, hour anyway. Eleven a.m. Then, right? 3 a.m. 5. I'd say lunchtime is good because you know they're going to break. I mean, it's never ended before noon. But, so, but what are you going to do? Well, in case he... Well, he's going to post a meeting. It yeah, could, yeah, could, post could. it for a time, but the reality is... The reality is, is what I'm trying to do is get the posting right. So... Yeah. Get the... Well, sure, close. Yeah. We'll deal with... We'll deal the, the particular issues of the day on that day. Right. But i got to get a time when they... But he notice. may not have a quorum, so it's not going to be... be I still have to have a notice oh, that's out right, there. Yeah. So what time are we going to put on the notice is the question. I'd say noon. Noon, noon, yeah. noon, yeah. noon. Well, noon. well you, you, you want to get... You, the purpose of the meeting is to perhaps to get another tally, depending on... If, uh, this, if a special warrant article has been amended, yeah. yes. Do you have to have a quorum at noon yes. to have a meeting? Yes. Oh. All yeah. meetings require a quorum. Yeah. Well, well, let me rephrase that. All meetings in which a decision is going to be made 
have to have a quorum. Yeah. You can have a meeting without a quorum if no decision yeah, is being now, made. Now, my question is, you would have a better chance of getting a quorum later than noon when people would go on Channel 2, 22 and see they're one-third of the way through the Warren articles at noon. But the problem is it ended at 2 last year. You don't want to make a meeting at 5 o'clock and let's say it ends at noon. Yeah. People are going to have other things to do and they're going to have to come back at yeah. 5. Wow. Oh, they couldn't even do because they're going to lock up when it kind of right. yeah, <laughs> in right. that scenario. I think yeah. noontime. So I, I have decided it will be noontime. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, so our next meeting is a week from Saturday at noon at Winnicott High School. Yeah. Lobby. Lobby. The auditorium. Near the hot dogs. In the lobby. Yeah. Okay. Right across from the hot dogs. The yeah. Academy hot dogs. Yeah. We'll join the other hot dogs. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else, guys? That's it. That's it. Thank you so much for your help. We are adjourned. <laughs>